Hey guys, Benji here. Today we're going to be looking at a recently IPO tech stock called DC2. DC2 provides managed cloud services, data center hosting and cloud automation software. Now you're probably familiar with a similar company called NextDC, which offers similar services and has seen strong stock price growth year to date. Now we know cloud services and tech is definitely the way of the future, so it's always exciting when a company like this lists. Let's start off by taking a look at what DC2 offers its customers and who those customers actually are. So the company provides data center and cloud hosted services, data center hosting and co-location, which is essentially where the company rents its data equipment space and bandwidth to its customers, data center and cloud automation software, and modular data center and hosting solutions. DC2 services over 300 end user business clients and has over 40 channel partners promoting and selling the data center and cloud product. Their clients are quite diverse. We have ASX listed mining, exploration, energy resources, telecommunications and financial service companies, local governments in Western Australia, Perth based schools and law firms, and of course, Aboriginal health organizations in the Northern Territory. With that, let's break down their business model to get a better idea of what their core business units actually are. DC2 offers an integrated solution for their customers, uh, the first being their cloud services and management, which is a vertically integrated cloud service system and associated management through a local managed service provider channel. This business unit has provided DC2 with revenue historically and will continue to be the focus for the company. Moving along here, we have their data centers. DC2's cloud services and management are underpinned by its directly owned and operated local data center capacity in Perth and the share capacity in Darwin with plans to expand this further after listing. They also offer DC Soft, which are its own software assets used in daily production to support the business. And finally, we've got DC Modular, which is a durable modular data center capability to allow for ultra high density co-location and hosting solutions at a reduced operational expense. Moving along here, let's have a look at DC's revenue streams. And whilst the company is currently loss making, it does still generate a little bit of revenue. In FY20, DC2 generated $1.85 million of revenue, with the majority around 90% of this revenue generated from the cloud services and management offerings. So this is definitely quite a concentrated revenue stream, and as such, the company hopes to expand and diversify their revenue streams going forward as part of their growth strategy. Okay, so now let's analyze the company financials. As mentioned before, DC2 is not profitable, so I'm not expecting the financials to blow me away by any means. Looking at DC2's income statements from 2019 and 2020, we can see that their revenue actually fell by $105,000 and overall they posted a $209,000 loss after tax, which is a substantial increase in losses from 2019. Next, let's see how their financial position looks with their balance sheet. As you can see, DC2 has significantly increased their cash position from 2019. However, despite this, they still aren't exactly in a strong position liquidity wise with $471,000 of current assets to their $608,000 of current liabilities. This is why listing is so important to them. As you can see from their pro forma adjusted statements of financial position, after even the minimum raise, they'll hold $4.5 million in cash, which definitely puts my mind at ease in terms of liquidity. I think that we'll likely see DC2 use their strong cash position for more rapidly expanding their growth and hopefully pay down some of their borrowings. It's also worth mentioning that DC2 won't be paying any dividends anytime soon, but you could probably already tell that from their poor financial position. So we've had a look at DC's financials, their revenue stream, and the primary products that they offer, but let's do a quick industry overview. Now, cloud services are already a high growth industry, but with COVID, we are seeing business shift more rapidly in their adoption of cloud technologies. Globally, the cloud services market is valued at $264 billion in 2019, with projections to grow to almost $927 billion by 2017 at a compounded annual growth rate of 16.4% from 2020 to 2027. And Australia, despite being a relatively small country, is one of the world's most advanced technology markets. Many large international technology companies have actually used Australia as early delivery locations for the global growth of their cloud services. We've seen companies such as Microsoft, Amazon, 
Google and Alibaba all take this route. All of these companies have said that Australia is a valuable enough market for them to fund in-country hyperscale data capabilities. And as you can see here, the data service market revenue is forecasted to grow in Australia at an annual compounded growth rate of 13.3%. So I definitely think that the industry should be a go-to for a future-oriented growth investor. However, whether DC2 is the best company within this industry for you is another story. So now what you've all been waiting for, is DC2 actually a buy? Now I'm going to start off with what I really like about the company and that's the industry that it's currently in. The cloud-based technology sector has seen a lot of momentum this year, especially because of COVID, and I can't see that slowing down anytime soon. Myself personally, I've volatility traded a company called WiseTech, I'm sure you're all familiar with it, and I still think it has a lot of growth potential into the future just based on the current demand. And I think that more people will start to work from home in the future as well, and we'll start to see less office work. So. We'll see how that affects cloud storage, but definitely looking very good for DC too. My major gripe with the company is probably their financials. I personally try to avoid companies that aren't yet profitable. It's just a personal standard that I hold for my portfolio. Um, and this probably comes down to my level of risk aversion. And it applies to you guys as well. If you are more risk averse, you may wanna avoid this company until their financials and fundamentals improve just a little bit. And I think it goes without saying as well, this is not a dividend paying stock. So if you are a dividend investor out there, you may wanna skip this one. If you guys did learn anything new, please remember to like and subscribe. These videos take me a long time to make and it really motivates me to keep pumping out the content. I just wanna mention as well, a small disclaimer, uh, always remember to do your own research before investing. This is just my opinion and this is not financial advice. In addition, I also don't own this stock so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Let me know what you guys think about this company, whether you think it's a buy, it's a sell, if you're currently holding it, and we'll see you all in just a couple of days. Thanks for watching, bye.